Hi there fellow friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to solve a very big problem I have with storage, especially when it comes to 3D printing filament. You might have it all sorted out and in that case I'm happy for you, but if you're like me you have your 3D printed filament laying all over your house and that's not ideal. But you've come to the right place since I think I have a solution. My initial thought was to go online, grab the first filament storage solution I could find, print it and call it a day. A few hours into scrolling, I only found some solutions that may work, but they did only storage. No modularity, no expansion at all. And by feeling the YouTube urge to create something modular, film it and uh, share with you guys, I decided to embark on a journey that would be much more complicated than I thought. The idea is simple. You have an already well diverse system, which is the 20mm extrusion profiles by OpenBeam. So let's start with that. Then we need a few parts that will work with this 20mm extrusion and are able to be wall mounted as well. Or if you want to stack more on top of each other, then you can just hook the 20mm extrusion on the wall with appropriate fasteners and then mount the brackets one on top of each other. In this way you can expand both vertically and horizontally. One, 100% 3D printed is not the way to go, because it might not yield the results that we are looking for. Remember the rule number one in engineering, never build something you can easily buy online. Second, it's able to be expanded vertically as well as horizontally, because you never know when your workshop will become bigger, so that you need to be prepared for that. Three, it's very strong, and by this I mean over-engineered strong. It has to hold up at least 20 kilograms of filament without any problem. Maybe you can store anything else up there, not only filament, not only spools, maybe some boxes with 3D printed equipment, you know it. It has to be strong. Then we'll have a cantilever design, onto which the holders for the filament will be mounted. For this we had two options. One, use the 3D printer and print just the holders for them. That would mean a very big print already, at least bigger than my machine can print. And second, you can use an already existing aluminium profile, but this time 20mm by 40mm, so that you'd have at least more mounting points for your future accessories. Now, the 20mm by 40mm extrusion can be in any length. For me, initially I thought it should be 20mm. After fiddling with it a bit, I decided to go with 25mm. In this way, the filament will stay a bit lower, so it has a lower center of mass and it's less likely to fall in case anything happens. But before we go to the design phase, let me share a few considerations that might be relevant for your project as well. One. The parts should be easy to print, and by this I mean you can print it easily with ABS or ASA. For me, it didn't quite turn out as I expected, and I moved back to PLA. I'll show in a moment during the lessons learned why. The tolerances should be very tight, so if you have the bracket going on the wall mount or on the 20mm extrusion profile, you want to be very close to it so it, the parts will not flex and bend where you tighten them to either the extrusion profile or to the wall. Then let's have a look in the design environment when I can easily show you what I'm talking about. So here is the assembly. You can see that I already added three layers for this system. The first one on the bottom is the one that's 25 centimeters in length that holds the spools, the one that we will build today. The second one is with 20 centimeters aluminum extrusion length. I decided not to build this one for today, but uh, you can also see a preview of it right here. And then on top of it, I just added a generic uh, layer with uh, 20 by 40 aluminum extrusion. And uh, you can see how you can stack this all together. On the back side, there are simple 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter aluminum extrusion as you can see right here and those can be secured onto the wall and you can add as many brackets as you want to build as many storage solutions as you desire on top you can see just a simple bracket this one right here this will hold an aluminum extrusion on top of which you can put anything you want you can see how simple it is to be modified you just decide where to put the new parts and you will be good to go so for instance this is something i would like to do here so that i can um, store or at least mount my lights, maybe my camera as well. In this way, I can do some type of top-down shots on the workspace. So yeah, that's basically the idea behind it. Let me show you how it looks without this filament 
So for ease of use, I just kept the bottom bracket in place, the one that we are actually going to build today. So we can check in more detail what's, uh, what's behind the project. So here you can see in red, this uh, little piece that has the logo on it. This one will actually be the fixing mechanism for our rod. So you can see here exactly how it goes. You place the rod in there, then this thing comes right at the end of the 3d printed part and here there will be a screw that will fix this in place similar on the front side there will also be a fixing mechanism for the end caps but these two holes here align with the center hole of the aluminum extrusion which will be uh, threaded so you can screw directly into the aluminum extrusion there will be a metric 5 slot in there as well and then the locking mechanism is also playing a second role here if you tighten it down it will also clamp the rod but it will also secure the end cap to the aluminum extrusion as well so let me show you exactly how this goes here i have the top part which can go like this and you can see there's a feature right here this flat part that would ensure that this would not rotate outward when uh, when you screw it down as you can see this is just a true hole so your m5 screw will go through this all the way to the end and we'll secure the end cap in place and also the rod at the same time now let me show you how the wall hanger would look so this would play the role of the 20 by 20 millimeter aluminum extrusion and this will be actually bolted to the wall using some screws and this is how it looks it's just a replica of the 20 by 20 aluminum extrusion but it has some features for instance a few holes that are from one way to the other so when you screw the bracket into this wall hanger it will go from the bracket through the bracket through the wall hanger again through the bracket at the end here you can see some cutouts for the wall screws these are just hex screws which go into the wall and they have a special cutout so they will not interfere with the bracket they are six millimeters in diameter and they should be plenty strong for this application and by going on the top view you can see how this goes into place so you just slide this in and then you go with screws from the outside to the inside where the brass heated insert would be in place clamping this all together and also having enough force to keep your filament safely all right, so that should be it in terms of design. Quite simple, but effective, I would say. Now, let's get printing. So here we have all the parts printed already. These are the brackets. These are the wall mounts. These are the bushings, the end caps for the front and we have some not printed parts. These are the aluminum profiles that we're going to use. Let me show them in more detail. So the fun fact is that they have these slots into which you can slide some nuts. We'll use two of these, 25 centimeters in length. Here you can see the bracket. That's one bracket for the left side. On red, I decided to print the locking mechanisms so that it's easier to distinguish which is a locking mechanism and which is the part that should be stationary. So you can either use one of these with 20 by 20 millimeter V-slot profile like this one and it can go inside this part right here and this is how the bracket will stay in place. You will just screw it with these holes and here it goes the cantilever that I was talking about which would also hold the rods that would hold the filament. So this also is screwed together with these uh, holes. And here in the front side, there should also be a cap that looks like this. You can also see that it has a feature for the, for the rod, for the 20 millimeter rod, which goes like this. And uh, with that mounted, you will put one rod right here and another one right here. These two will go all the way out and on top of the rods you will place your filament. For the front cap we have this part, so two holes would go in the inner holes of the aluminum extrusion. I will drill and tap this one to M5 or 5mm and then this part screws directly into those holes. Here you can see the cutout for the 20mm aluminum rod and here is the locking mechanism which will be screwed directly into the aluminum profile rail right here 
using some 5mm nuts. For the other bracket, you can see this is the side where the wall mount will go into place. This is the wall mount. We have some cutouts right here for a screw that screws directly into the wall. The lateral holes are for the true hole screws that will go on the bracket. So this should go in like this. And then you will go with 5mm screws from this side all the way to this side and will clamp in place like this the wall mount, securing it quite, quite strongly. Then you come with a 20mm rod, it drops into here, then you go with the locking mechanism, push it in place and there's a 3mm screw that goes inside here just to hold it in place. This is the aluminum rod that we'll be using, so it's 20mm in diameter. And this is where the bushing will come into place. It goes like this and it can easily rotate. To secure everything in place we'll use this kind of nuts. So this is a brass heat insert and it's inserted into place using your um, soldering iron. These are the cheap ones. I will use the cheap ones for metric 5 and for M3 I will use these ones which are a bit higher quality and they will be just uh, fused with the filament so you can just tie things directly to them. I think you already understand how this thing should work so let's stop talking and put this thing together and get it done. In terms of usage, this thing is quite easy to use. It's just a matter of putting your filament up there and you're done. Also, you can expand its usage by hooking up things to the aluminum profiles using the normal V-slot nuts that you can find online. For me, I might check if I'm able to mount my camera or some lights or my phone. So subscribe if you want to see that as well. Imagine you want to use the storage and mid print you want to change the filament. That would usually require you to move the filaments around and uh, have yours mounted on the 3D printer while the others are just staying there in the storage system. That would work, but ideally you'd have a way to use directly the storage system as a filament holder for your active 3D printer. Here is a sleeve that goes on the 20mm rod and has an inner diameter slightly larger than the rod itself and some features that would help reduce the friction. This just go onto the aluminum rod like this and can easily slide around and rotate. So when you have this one in place and the filament mounted on top it can easily roll directly on these rods. The quality I was getting out of the ASA was not enough. The faces which are staying on the support material tended to shrink a bit more than expected. 
That means it basically lifted out of the support material and it ended up having a bigger gap. A bigger gap is not ideal for this application since the part will be sandwiched on the aluminum profile and it has to be a quite tight fit. Now, we are already at the end and if you stay all the way until here, I would like to thank you very much for watching and remind you that I will be down in the comments for any support you might need. Don't forget also to like the video if you liked it, share it with your friends, subscribe and I will see you in the next one.